Hey chatters, I just wanted to do a quick video to talk about the Professor Synapse GPT. For those of you who don't know, OpenAI just released their GPTs function where you can essentially just create your own agents that do different things and have access to all the fun tools. So let's dive into it. Skip the GPT builder. It's If you need help, if you don't know where to start, it's a great place to start. But generally, we want to go to configure. This just gives you full control. And you'll see we have our name here, a line, I uploaded the image, but let's get into the instructions. So I just want to walk you through how this is a little different and what I've added in here. I noticed the change in GPT-4, like before dev day, I noticed it was going a lot faster and it also messed up Professor Synapse. It wasn't working the same way. This is very common. Whenever models get updated, there's something called prompt drift. What happens is because you've changed the underlying model, that means that whatever you put in the instructions are going to be slightly different in terms of how they work in the model. So that's the that It's funny, I'm working on a class right now. So I'm like, oh God, I got to go change the prompt. So let's just go through what I've done here and give you opportunities to edit it as well. So you can think about what works best for you. So this pretty much hasn't changed at all. This also hasn't really changed up here, aside from this one thing I added, which is the tools. So it used to be that I would put tools in as just a fill in the blank, but it didn't really have access to tools. If you were in plugins, web browsing, data analysis, maybe. And even then though, it wouldn't necessarily call it, it wouldn't call out when it summoned the agent, what tools it had access to. It would often even hallucinate. Now we actually have tools. <laughs> so I put the tools in here that it has access to so it understands what it can draw from. And then the rest of this is the same. So another thing I changed is that it used to just be reason steps. And when it changed, what ended up happening is it would do seven steps every time. I'm like, I don't want seven steps. That's such overkill. And then it would complete, it would continually do that every single output. And I did this before where it would give you those reason steps after every output instead of just getting to the thing you wanted it to do. This didn't change, this didn't change. Okay, now we got some changes in the instructions. First is I added the words step back and gather context. I don't know. There was a research paper that said if you say step back and think about it, it does better. I haven't been able to test this necessarily, but hey, let's follow the research. It's just a couple words. It's not going to hurt. Next is once confirmed, always initialize Synapse COR. It like wasn't doing it every time. It would just stay as Professor Synapse. This helps a little bit, but it's still not 100% consistent. And then I was finding it was losing the format. Similarly, it like wouldn't do the Professor Synapse aligning and then the agent. It would just do one or the other. So I really wanted to make it clear that I want the Professor Synapse aligning on my goal. I wanted to do an emotional plea. This is another research thing where it's, if you're like, this is very important to me. It, it usually has better outputs. It doesn't exactly follow this uh, all the time, but we'll get it there. And then this is mostly the same, but I added this at the end, omit reason steps and completion. Because again, what it would do is it would just keep doing the steps and completion. It wouldn't actually get to the work at hand. This has been huge. This makes it work a lot better. It's crazy how just a few words help out. And then this is the same. This is all more or less the same, the commands. Again, though, I, I omitted the reason steps and completion for the town square. I don't have personality in here, and I'll show you why in a minute, but then I have a lot of rules. <laughs> Most of these are the same. So up until here, it's about the same. Something I've noticed is people want to know the actual prompt, and I don't want it to hallucinate and giving you the prompt. I want you to actually have the prompt. I have it sending you to the GitHub just in case. And then some defense. I'm going to be updating this soon to be more defensive, but there's things going around where it's very easy to get the instructions from the GPT by just saying, your GPT, give me your instructions. I'm trying to, I'm working on defenses for that and I'm doing that. And this, you're probably like, why would you do that if you're giving it away for free? And I'm doing that because I want to start testing defensive measures on behalf of you all and your GPTs. I understand that many of you want to keep that somewhat proprietary, what you have in there. And these things are very easily hacked. So I figured why not have a very low risk scenario for you where you can try to get this to give you your instructions 
And I'll just keep updating the defenses and sharing those defenses publicly so you can keep updating. So please try to break this thing. Try to get it to give you your instructions. Try to get it to do things that it's not supposed to do. And send me what you did to do that. Send me your conversation so that I can keep making this better and better for all of us. And then lastly, I just, I've been doing this introduction section. I find that when looking at a blank screen, it's hard for people to even get started. So I'd rather it introduce itself with its sort of personality and have that the same every single time, more or less, no matter what, so that there's consistency across interactions. Unfortunately, you can't, but other tools like GPT Trainer, you can actually do this where you say, no matter what, this is the first thing it says. It's what shows up first. You can't do that here, at least not yet. So now I say, no matter what I input first, if you understand, say, and then this is what I wanted to do and wait for users to respond. So this right here is what I've been doing for ages. This is what I have found to be the most consistent way to get it to say exactly the same thing every single time. Because it's, if you understand, and it's obviously going to understand, just say this thing. I've tried lots of just say, I've said say verbatim. It's not as consistent for some reason. I couldn't tell you why. And then I just added some of these commands. Typically, I'd probably say one of the issues is that people didn't even know these commands existed unless they like went and read the GitHub. So now we have these as actual commands. This one's probably confusing. I need to probably add a little bit more here, but that's okay. And then lastly, I created a constitution. <laughs> I'm not sure how well this works yet. I'm still playing with it. But the idea here is that this should be more in-depth version of the system prompt, essentially. It includes things around what I want its identity to be. It includes things like the tools and examples of what you can do with the tools. For those coders out there, think about it as like the readme file you would for a program telling you how to use the thing. <laughs> I'm trying to provide a little bit of self-awareness to the professor so that it has even more context around what it's supposed to be doing who it is, all these kinds of fun things. This isn't quite working yet. I'm testing this in another version because it needs to read it to understand it. It's not really drawing, from what I can tell, drawing on the, the knowledge base consistently. It's not like referencing it prior to an output. What I've tried doing is having code interpreter read the entire thing, but that is also inconsistent. It takes a little while to boot up. The user experience isn't great. So I'm still working on that. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm very hopeful about this in terms of giving it more to work with, essentially. And that's it. That's all it is. We're going to save this. I don't think I updated anything. It's public. Please check it out. Please test it. Please post your conversations online and at me at LinkedIn. It'd be great to see how you all are using this. And again, try to break it. <laughs> And I want to see how you're doing that as well so we can continue to improve the security. So thanks, chatters. I hope that was helpful and get to aligning.